Hey everyone, excuse the voice, I only went and got COVID. I'm on the mend now though, so hopefully we'll be back in action properly soon. Anyway, it came up in a class I was teaching recently that there are certain aspects of ZBrush I'd love to see addressed. Just little things, you know, but that collectively add up to stuff that could make the experience a lot more enjoyable and accessible for new users, and also for more experienced people as well. I've made my own little list here, and I'm sure you guys have your own as well, and I genuinely would love to hear about them in the comments. Like the little things that just grind your gears or you wish were just fixed. I'm 100% certain I've forgotten loads of the ones I used to roll my eyes at, so these are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. I haven't seen a video online covering this sort of stuff before, so I thought I'd do one to get the ball rolling. Hey, who knows, maybe someone at Maxon or Pixelogic is watching. So let's get started. First up is the tool import window. This thing doesn't lock its focus. So when I click on this and it opens up, that's great. But if I click anywhere on the canvas, it goes behind the screen. And now I think that nothing is working. I can't actually see it. This should lock focus. So I have to alt tab to get this back, which is kind of annoying. And because ZBrush takes up your entire screen, you don't even see the taskbar where you can see that there are two ZBrush windows open. So your solution is to either open up your taskbar with control escape to see that, or to hit alt tab to get that dialogue back. But for new beginners who've accidentally hit the import and don't know what's going on, it's very hard to know that they just think that ZBrush has locked up. This happens all the time. As I said, if you hit alt tab, you can bring it back. And the next one is basically a snap to edge feature for easier positioning. I realize there are some tools out there and I've actually done a video on this myself for the positioner plugin written by somebody and um, which you can check out in the description I'll link it there this one's really handy in that you can align stuff to the outer or inner sides or left or right or whatever of an object the new alignment tools inside ZBrush basically don't really allow you to do that which is kind of annoying that they kind of did something but then did it half as well as somebody who's actually written a plugin so that's kind of annoying uh, really nice to get that fixed in there by default. The next one that annoys me is that if you do have an open face and you try and use your Q mesh and you Q mesh a single polygon, it's actually going to cause this to happen. So you're actually going to get a polygon on both sides. And you won't see this if you don't have double sided turned on. It's going to look like you've just extruded something nicely and it's just gone down and worked as expected. That's under here on the display properties, double. If I turn this off and I just do that, I think this has worked fine. It actually hasn't. If I turn on double sided, you can see it kept the original face at the top and then extruded down to the bottom. And it did that because there's an open face here. It wouldn't work, or it, rather it would work on the other side where we have a closed face. So there's no problem with that, but this one can be very, very annoying. And I'd love to see it fixed. The next one is actually here. All this stuff up here, we don't need to see this. How many people have ever used the eraser brush or the alpha brush here? Um, on, a, on a daily basis it generally doesn't happen and I realize you know we can go in here and we can say auto hide 2d tools it's all that's doing really is hiding these 2d tools the two and a half d brushes but hide them from here like, there's no point having them here like, why not just get rid of them we can reset here and it will get rid of most things but it won't get rid of these and it really it should it's just again another layer of confusion for new starters which leads me to the next one. The active tool is the currently selected tool. So you make it big and then you make the same thing small and then you select both of them. So again, not a lot of sense. If I do have multiple tools, the one that's selected is active. That's all I need to see. Why do I have one big one and one small one? Again, it leads to confusion for beginners. So this brings me to a big one. Uh, if I click on the cylinder and I drag it out onto my canvas, under what circumstances do I not want to be in edit mode? I, I honestly I can't think of any I really can't you you instantly want to be in edit mode to have to hit the edit button every single time makes no sense it should just by default go into edit mode at this stage ZBrush is no longer a two and a half D application it's primarily a 3D application so just embrace it put stuff into edit mode I'm more likely to want to be in edit mode than I am not 99% of the time I want to be in edit mode when I draw something onto the canvas just do it for me, have it there by default. The next one is the knife brush. While it's an amazing addition, the knife curve brush, man, it is so unstable and crashes all the time. Surely this needs to get fixed. I guess it's just, it's so useful, but because it crashes so much, it actually becomes next to useless. The next one's gonna sound really silly, but the active points up here should show polygons. Every single 3D app out there uses polygons as a measure of, of density. 
rather than points. So, you know, I know Zebra loves to do things its own way, but this is one of those we just go with the industry standard. I know you can change it up here in the preferences and you can change, you can drag your active points up onto your interface and replace it with active polygons. I get that. The total polygon count doesn't work. That's another one I'd love to see fixed. But those things just by default have it as active polygons. It just makes, again, for beginners, it's much more sense to see polygons up there than points. Next, for someone who changes their UI a lot, um, some of my personal UI and some for the classes that I teach, if I go to preferences and under config, I hit save UI, it's going to find the correct folder and actually allow me to save that UI. However, if I just want to load a new UI and I go to preferences, load UI, it doesn't remember that folder. So it'll just go to another folder entirely. It should really remember that folder. There's no reason not to. I mean, you can even go down to preferences, miscellaneous, and you can say use Z folders which in theory should use the ZBrush folders, which works for you know the likes of the tool import. We'll now use the ZBrush import, but under preferences, config, I hit load UI after turning that on and it still doesn't find that folder. Really annoying. So my fix for this always is to go to preferences and before I load a UI, go to the save UI, copy and paste this path so I can come back into preferences, go back into load UI and then paste that path in so I can find my UIs. Really annoying. Interface colors. Um, right now, obviously, um, when you have multiple sub tools in here, what happens is, especially for, for people who are just starting, it can be very difficult to see that this is the selected sub tool. This highlight is just not strong enough to be able to see that. I do have a tutorial myself on how to find that in the interface and change this, but it's not ideal as it has some other problems as well. Again, linked in the description. The next one is kind of stupid. Um, Shift S. One handy for snapping onto the canvas shouldn't be a default shortcut. I, the reason I say that is Control S is save. S is change the size of your brush. You're using Shift to smooth all the time. So as a beginner, you're pressing S, Shift, and Shift S all the time. And the amount of times you get Shift S just dropping down another version and people going, I don't know what's happened. And you can tell them again and again, but every single time it's a surprise to people. And then they have to remember another shortcut to clear it with Control N. Shift S, so please just change the snapshot to any other shortcut by default and it'll make a lot of new users' lives a lot easier. Next, wouldn't it be nice in the documents over here to have presets for the sizes? I don't understand why in this day and age we don't have like 1K, 2K, all that kind of stuff, presets. So I can just drop, choose from a drop down list like every other app out there. It's such a simple thing. So here's a cool one, palettes. What about having them over two monitors? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be great to be able to pull off a palette and just dock it onto another monitor? If they can do stuff like going to the file menu and having the XMD toolbox on another monitor, which is awesome by the way to be able to do that, why can't we do that with palettes? Just let them float and we can let them let us put it onto another monitor and have multiple palettes on another monitor and free up our actual sculpting space. The amount of students who are working on HD monitor who just instantly get cramped and can't actually sculpt because they can't see their interface and they're constantly scrolling up and down through toolbars and stuff. It's, it's, it's a problem every single time. The next one, this is very confusing for beginners and I can totally understand why. And I also realize there's a lot of muscle memory behind this, so it's unlikely to change. But when you hit control and you create a mask selection and you hit control tap, that will invert that selection. So control shift to make another selection and then control shift tap, I would expect that to have the same behavior and invert that selection. And instead, of course, all it does is bring everything back. So unfortunately, control shift drag with select as opposed to control tap with mask it becomes very, very unintuitive for beginners. So that's it. That's pretty much the list off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure I'll find another three or four as soon as I post the video. But I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. What annoys you about Zerbush or what do you wish was fixed? You never know, maybe someone's watching and some of these changes might actually get made. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to click like, subscribe and leave those comments. I genuinely love to hear your bugbears. As a teacher, I'm always interested in what annoys people so I can try to find ways around it for my students. So I'd be really, really interested to hear what other people's opinions are. Thanks a million. All right, bye.